Hello friends, welcome back to my channel MU exam. Friends, this is my second video on dry dock. In last two videos, we have seen the major jobs that are done during dry dock and the frequency of dry dock. In this video, we will see the types of dry dock. So friends, the first type of dry dock is grieving dry dock or excavated dry dock. So these are constructed on land near seashore using concrete, build walls, blocks and gates. So basically uh, in this the ship is maneuvered inside the dock and gate is closed and water is pumped out. As you can see this is the gate. Once ship is inside the gate is closed and by using the pumping arrangement the water this water is pumped out. So this is the final condition after emptying the water from the dry dock. The steel and the concrete structure is used to make the enclosure and heavy steel gates are used to seal the dock to stop the increase of water once the ship is standing on the blocks. The gate can be in two parts as we can see in this diagram or it can be of one solid steel structure supported on rollers. and uh, hydraulic mechanisms or these gates are hydraulically operated these docks basically can accommodate bigger size vessels they actually are cheaper as compared to other docking other docks they are uh, used to perform retrofitting and major modifications the supply of space, machinery and services is very much accessible due to location as they are near land. These docks have uh, welding facilities, hot work and other workshops located inside the dock. The maintenance dock of these, uh, the maintenance cost of these docking, uh, uh, this graving dock increases as the age increases. The only problem, the major problem with this dock is the uh, operation of the gates. So if there is some problem with the gate, this, these docks becomes unoperational. So second type of dock is the floating dock. So these are used to repair vessels that have met with an accident or broken down in the middle of the sea. So these docks are basically U-shaped structures which we call as pontoons, pontoons and they can be propelled to the location where the ship has got uh, met, met with an accident and it is unable to sail to the nearby uh, graving, graving dock. So in that case we can use these floating docks and uh, we can do the maintenance. These U-shaped structure are filled with water as you can see over here these are the ballast tanks these are filled with water which makes the dock go underwater helping the ship to sail once the ship is secured and brought to the repair area the water is really released making the dock to rise up and exposing that part of the ships which are otherwise underwater as you can see over here the these are the ballast tanks of the floating docks these are uh, when ship is in place as we can see over here then the water from these ballast tanks is pumped out and the uh, the area which is underwater as you can see here is exposed uh, uh, is out of water when uh, deblasting of the floating dock is carried out this is the diagram for the floating dock the floating dock is usually Built using steel framing which is very much similar to a seagoing ship with ballast tanks provided on side and bottom to rise or lower the dock. So they are uh, cheaper to maintain as compared to graving dock. They can be installed near or away from the shore. The floating dock can be altered in uh, size by, by cutting or rebuilding. That is their modification is very much easy. 
they can also split into two different floating docks independent of each other maintenance and uh, maintenance cost of these docks is similar to that of the ship as they are very much similar to a sea going ship the floating dock operation will affect if there is tide or during windy weather so the operation of these floating docks is affected by the weather weather conditions friends uh, this is the third type of dock ship lift dock so it consists of a cradle which are used to slide a platform into the water below the ship this is the cradle once the platform reaches below the ship the ship is properly navigated to the platform then after that winches are used to lift the ship and place it in the desired position so these are the winches so this platform is lifted the ship is ship is basically lifted in this type of dry dock this is mostly used for small ships so uh, this is the fourth slipway dock is the fourth type of dry, uh, dry dock this is also used for small vessels where uh, the ship is or, or the small ships are placed on the trolley and pulled ashore on a inclined surface the similar uh, the the marine railway is a slipway dock which is used for 300 or or, or ship which are about 300 tons th sorry 3000 tons in weight this is very much similar to slipway dock in this the inclined plane extends from the shore to the water and the boats are hauled onto the cradle so basically uh, this uh, these ships are placed on the cradle and they are pulled by the rails that were that were the types of uh, dry docks now let's see the a little uh, we let's see little bit about the blocks these are the blocks on which the ship rest after the water is pumped out so every ship every ship is provided with docking manual which will provide a docking plan guide approved by the classification society so this basically the placement of the block uh, for a particular ship is approved by the classification society the block need to be arranged as per the docking plan of the ship as there are many type of equipments or the parts which can get damaged if the blocking position is not altered like the eco sounder and the anodes etc there are many things which will get which will get damaged if these blocks are not in proper position the common type of material which is used is the concrete with steel timber blocks and uh, timber on top and concrete at the bottom so these are the three types of blocks which are used on docking uh other thing is uh, there are keel blocks and side blocks as you can see these are the keel blocks and these are the side blocks so side blocks are having less stiffer less stif stiffer than the keel blocks as stiffer side blocks will overload the vessel and may damage the structure the height of the side block is usually similar or more than that of the keel block one more thing is the height of the block is very critical factor if the placement and height of the block is according to the ship sail the load distribution will be even and uh, as we as we can uh, as we already know that uh, this is actually very common that if contact area is less then the load on that area will be more so the contact area defined uh, determines the load extent on these blocks so to reduce the load on these blocks the dock master will uh, will ask to deblast all the tanks during docking to reduce the load on these blocks 
सो थैंक यू फ्रेंड्स दिस वॉज थर्ड वीडियो ऑन डाइडॉकिंग सो टिल देन टिप केयर हैव फन